recently I seen you talking about an encounter you had with the young Scrappy. Can you talk about that? No, Scrappy. Um, yeah, little Scrappy. I told it. It's, it's a story that's currently catching a lot of wave. And, you know, um, it was just an experience I had with little Scrappy. Um, he asked me to do him a favor. I went far outside of my way to do the favor. When I got to the uh, location where he's supposed to be to receive the favor, he wasn't present. Um, he wasn't able to be contacted. It uh, it awoke in some some anger in me. Uh, I wouldn't get opportunity to see Lil Scrappy until probably some weeks later, at a whole in a whole another state, whole another location. Right after I had just had a fight, and um, when I saw him, I don't I don't know. I just reacted and I punched him. And um, what happened after that happened? Was there anybody else there? Oh, there were quite a few people there, the, um, the whole G-Unit crew, including um, 50 Cent, his lawyer at the time. How did everybody react? Were they mad at you? Were they cool? Were they like... Yeah, well, there was confusion. There was anger. It turned into like a pushing and shoving match, a lot of chaos between myself, Mike Lighty, and Chris Lighty, who were very interested in Scrappy's presence at the um, event, and I wasn't aware of it. So I had found myself in a position caught up trying not to overreact and really fuck up and fight back when Chris and Mike were kind of being aggressive toward me. And I had to find a medium where I wasn't punking out either because the niggas was pretty hot. Right. They weren't throwing punches, but they were coming toward me and they was on fire. And if I'd have just reacted just regularly, I would have fucked up. So I was trying to like calm them down and still like, like hold up my nigga, like you feel me? So, but you know, because I believe my intentions were pure, it all worked out for the best. I was able, we was able to calm the, the, the initial wave. What was Scrappy doing at this time? Recuperating. Oh, okay. And uh, once he recuperated and we, we kind of calmed it down, uh, Mike and Chris mediated on his behalf with me. We politicked and talked. And Scrappy and I, and they, they asked me would I be kind enough to forgive him for what he did and just let it be up under the rug. So, I, you know, I accepted their, their plea and uh, gave Scrappy a pass and accepted his apology, and then it was cool after that. Shout out little Scrappy. What up, my nigga? Recently, I think I seen that you had an issue with Buster Rhymes' bodyguard at one point. It's an old issue, yeah. Old issue. Um, <clears throat> Like I told you, I was raised in um, private schools. In particular, there were Seventh-day Adventist schools. And, you know, most people, when you hear a church Christian, you think about going to church on Sunday. Um, the main difference between the group of people that I was raised with and the average church goer, we, they go to church on Saturday, the seventh day. So um, that's a pretty odd occurrence for me to run across growing up, other Seventh-day Adventists. Um, one time watching um, some type of hip-hop show, I believe I became aware of that Busta Rhymes grew up affiliated with Seventh-day Adventist schools too. So as a kid with a hip-hop dream, that was like uh, something for me to hold on to mentally. Like that's something I got in common with somebody that made it. If I ever got into an environment where I could approach him, I would lead with that type of talk so we could feel like we were, you know, we had a connection outside of this rap shit. And with my general uh, image, I knew that as the years went on, when I still bust the rhymes across my mind, that would still be my general plan because I knew that would like contradict the image people have of me. So I would always like to lead with things that would shock people based on what I figured they would already assume. So we flash years and years. This has just been something in my chamber of a bucket list type thing. Fly, I'm in Connecticut at 50 Cent House shortly after Lil Scrappy had did the gun shit. Okay. And I had only spoken to him on the phone since then. And I had planned on, to be honest with you, just when I see Scrappy, just holler at him and it's over with. It wasn't nothing I was going to trip on him about. But just the way um, things have it, I was at this uh, at this party and I, Buster Rhymes was there. So I wanted to approach Buster Rhymes about, guess what? Some, some, some spiritual church, nerdy, innocent shit. I want to talk about church school. So as I was going to approach Buster Rhymes, his bodyguard made it his business to try to like impede my progress. We were inside 50 Cent's house, the mansion in Connecticut. So as he was like trying to stop me from going further, 
I had been at this house for like three days straight before anybody had got there, watched them put this whole party together. I watched every guest get bust in, get here, and now the party is going full speed. They got a whole casino that's going. Ain't nobody told me where I can go in this house none of that time. So it's like he's trying to stop me from getting to a general area that Buster Rhymes is in, but that area is not, it's nothing. You're really overdoing your job is what he's doing. So as he's trying to hold me back, I very politely am like trying to get his hand out the way, but I'm showing him my tattoo. Like, my nigga, it's cool. I live here. But he was on some like, yeah, it don't matter. So what? You know how this goes shit. And he like, he hold me, trying to hold me back to the point where now we having like a tussle and it slipped like that and hit me up like, and I bit my tongue and that caused me to file him. Then we had a rumble, which um, in the end of it, he and his counterparts kind of got the best of me. I ain't gonna say he and his counterparts. I think I got kicked while I was down by a third party. But he himself took me down and restrained me. He was a he was self-defense, big old strong nigga. That nigga grabbed my thumb and did some shit. And Buster didn't get involved. Um, you know, actually Buster came to me and expressed how wrong his man's was. You know, whatever, whatever. But as I was going through that process, that's when somebody told me 50 want to talk to me. That means he had got word of what just took place. So they tell him to come here and holler at me. So as I went to holler at him in that room full of all those people, that's when Scrappy hopped up. I ain't seen him since then. Oh, so this happened on the same day? It was five minutes later. Oh, okay, okay. You know where my shit at, man. Everything is spotted up most easily. We on YouTube, we on IG primarily. The uh, Keep It the Google podcast coming soon. Politicking in all, all digital platforms. You want a hard copy, holler at Trap LA. Illiterate coming soon. Shout out Cleopatra Records, Omar Iceman. We getting money. Be about your money at all costs. Baymac.bitcartel.com for the Baymac Elite clothing.